Hi everyone, I'm Luke and today I'll be taking you through my week 7 and 8 breakdown. My reference material for this week was nothing really more artistic, it was really based in the rigging tutorial section because that's what I'm planning on doing next. Um, one of the ones I was most interested in was this one by Onmars 3D which is using a, um, a website called Mixamo where you can actually import your models and this website will actually you you simply click spots on the chest, shoulders, elbows, hands, pelvis, knees, and feet, and it will actually rig and <clears throat> rig and skin weight the character for you, which potentially has great use to me because I've currently fallen about two weeks behind, and hopefully that could help speed stuff up. Moving on to week seven, we spent our single class before taking the two week holidays. On our folio plan, I went over my rationale and intention and sort of thought about more about what I'm doing now and how I've changed from the very broad plan of just creating a 3D animation to more attempting to follow the 3D pipeline or 3D character design pipeline of a professional within the industry, um, where the outcome is that at first I would really like to make my best most high quality character that I can make at this time and then potentially well then in week 7 to week 12 I will rig the character texture it and hopefully do a couple of story based animations that sort of get his character across um, as I have little character modeling and animation experience. I've mostly played with environments, lighting, and composition. Um, I think this is a really great uh, tool for me to really get better at character modeling. Some related works that I could think of for my folio overall was that of Dingo Doodle's Fool's Gold campaign retelling on YouTube. It's sort of my her ones are full 2D animations of different events that have happened throughout her Dungeons and Dragons campaign and lots of them focusing on just her character. And the opening to Critical Role, another D and D uh sort of live stream. But the opening animation is sort of a bunch of like five second clips of characters and what's happened in their backstories and sort of showing you how they've become the damaged goods that they are. <laughs> um, both sort of imitating something similar that I would like to be able to get to the level of with my 3D model to eventually have short skits of my character with his whatever character thing he's doing and, you know, potentially even one day I could make a full animation sort of like Dingo Doodles. Um, based more on the artwork side, my character modelling um, reference and sort of where I'm getting all of my ideas from is Polarium Ukraine's Raid Shadow Legends. They have sh a whole bunch of characters on their art station, which are very inspiring. This is the most inspiring work that I've found, especially by Genshi Buscelli, by, yeah, G Genshi Buscelli, Ados Montreal Square Enix developer. He um, made all of the very, very high detail characters within lots of the new Marvel games and Square Enix games and they're very high detailed and you know hopefully one day I'll be able to get to that level. <laughs> Moving on to the methods I well need to rig which th which is the main thing I'm doing this this semester or this half of the semester which is you would start off with placing bones and creating hierarchy between those bones as in like you would create a pelvis and the pelvis you would have to make the pelvis the boss of each bone within the legs and each bone in the arm would be you know a subordinate to the shoulder bone um, after that you would select each bone and skin weight it telling the bone how, what part of the body it controls and how much it controls it and then after that you would just put little sort of little puppet master <laughs> buttons that I can grab and move to help manipulate the body more easily after that, I would love to storyboard some scenes to animate, hopefully, potentially one day. Um, moving on to production, the tools that I've been using so far are definitely Maya, Procreate, ZBrush, Nomad, Sculpt, Photoshop, and XGen. 
and the timeline is not looking the way it is right there right now I'm sort of in I'm in week nine now or just starting off in week nine I've only just gotten up to actually placing bones in the body because I had to completely you know, I'll get into that in the next couple of in the next couple of things and the outcome <laughs> hopefully will be a completely textured character animated in in a believable way in some form of short vignettes expressing the characters well character moving on to week eight um, I had very bad troubles with X gen um, X gen being the soft or the the tool within Maya that makes the hair it is very 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 particular apparently and when I had finished doing the hair I reconnected the head to the body and then it freaked out because I had not UV unwrapped the body and X-Gen was very much really wanting the exact same UV as the head, which was just not going to happen because that was... The head was unwrapped and it was just taking up the entire space on the UV layout menu, which just isn't going to happen when you have to do an entire character. Um, you see lots of white stuff jumbled on top of each other here because that's because a lot of these materials are the same material like... The very long one on the top right is just a bunch of belts, a bunch of belts tying things and it's just, they're all just leather. <laughs> so hopefully using whatever software I can use I can make all those belts look, have a seamless texture and they won't look out of place and they're only very little on the body so they don't really have that much going on whereas I tried to make the face and the thing in the very centre which is the cloth on his jacket and his waistcoat bit larger so I can put more detail into those um, but yeah in the end I had to UV unwrap the character which took a very long time and then I had to move on to redoing <laughs> the X-Gen guides and everything as you can see I've learnt a lot I, I found a new way to make the X-Gen guides lot, a lot thinner and readable more understandable um, and in the end, I did end up getting all the way through X-Gen and creating new hair. And this is what I've ended up with at the moment. I think it looks a little bit better than it did before, but it was also a little bit of a rush job because I just had to get on to the next step of my, of what I'm doing. Well, the next step I'm hoping to get into next week is that I'm hoping to completely finish rigging and rigging and skin waiting and getting the character ready to be animated because I would really really love to jump into some animation alright thank you very much for listening to me today this has been my week 7 to 8 update let's hope I get a little bit more done